Hello and welcome to Citizen Sleeper. Uh, I'm gonna treat like uh, treat this like a series because this is a long form narrative game. I've been looking forward to uh, playing this. I've heard nothing but good things. I've been in a real TTRPG mood uh, or uh, Tatterpig. Tatterpig is uh, I've heard th this term and now it's I, I want it to be part of my common vernacular or uh, nomenclature. But anyway. Uh, Citizen Sleeper is a, a cyberpunk-ish uh, um, TTRPG or Tatterpig inspired game, and uh, I've been I've been knee deep in D and uh, D stuff lately, and I've also been feeling the whole kind of neon punk kind of dystopian future thing uh, ever since I played Shadows of Doubt. It really put me in the mood, um, and I'm not even a huge Blade Runner fan boy, but uh, hey. You know, it's got the moods. Got my coffee. Uh, so c consider this an episode one. I, um, I I feel like this is a game I would like to play through. If this is completely blind, I've managed to keep myself uh, very, um, you know, uh, spoiler spoiler free. And uh, I'll be reading through this and we'll, uh, I, I hope you will join me. This should be a lot of fun. Uh, grab your favorite beverage. Grab a grab a kernel. I don't know what you your your favorite snack, and and we're gonna dive right in. The story continues. The DLC episodes may be complete, but the story of the Helion system is far from over. Um, all right. Well, I, I think I have the DLC. I'm not sure. Well, we, we might have to look into that. So here is our uh, operator choices, um, or not operator choices, cl uh, character classes. Uh, this is the operator. An operator works with drones and high-precision remote machines to perform complex tasks from a distance. Sleepers assigned to operator work are usually cerebral and precise people. I actually really like this already, um, this character. Uh, obviously, the artwork in this game is, like, uh, no pun intended, but pretty stellar. Um, extractor. Extractors work on resource extraction, often in hard vacuum environments. Sleepers assigned to ex extractor work are often confident, self-sufficient, and have a high level of endurance. Oh, is there only two? Oh no, there's a third one. <clears throat> Machinist. Machinist repairs and modifies automated systems used in industrial resource extraction. Sleepers assigned to machinist usually, uh, work are usually di diligent, careful, and structured people. Um, I like, you know, for me, when I play a, a tatter pig, when I play any kind of uh, a role playing game, I like to to try and get into a character and uh, never mind the min max, never mind the skills. Um, but uh, I, I like the idea of operator. I like the idea of working with drones. It's always something I've enjoyed. Um, so let's go with this interface work with all digital interfaces. Use strength or strength of will. So they don't have a lot of strength of will. Um, approach problems with awareness is zero. So they, their main, you, it looks like you get one skill, plus one skill uh, in each of these classes, and then you get one negative. So it's kind of like you get a feat and flaw. <laughs> so let's go ahead and go, I'm gonna go with operator. It sounds like uh, almost like disaster piece music. I know it's not, cause I listened to disaster pieces discography like at a constant basis. I find it to be one of the best um, listening music for when I'm designing uh, my own world and campaign and dungeons and stuff. It's just such a mood that I appreciate. It's like a, almost like a synth dungeon music. The first thing you become aware of on waking is the disconnect, the delay between thinking and feeling, between wanting to act and acting. Minor, almost imperceptible, but always present. At its worst, when waking, you, when you're self-aware, sorry. It's at its worst when waking, when yourself has spent many dark hours recalling what it felt like to be real, to be a person, to be in a body that was indisputably yours. Um, for, think of that body or forget that body. Forget that body. You resist nostalgia. It is pointless, especially now. This is the moment to reach out, not curl inwards. This is your moment of escape, even if it feels immediately like you traded one prison for another. Smaller, colder, lifeless. Reach out. You almost laugh 
or you would if there was room or even air to do so. The walls of the container are immediately present, cold hard at your back and face, cramping your limbs. You resist the desire to stretch, knowing that the claustrophobia would come next and retreat a little from your central nervous system. It isn't, it isn't painful, not like you used to know pain, at least. An emergency moan pain is a message delivered with efficiency and ease, a reminder that harm is imminent. There is no insistent throb, no trembling nerves, just a warning, warning delivered with the banal quality of a digital notification. Right now, there are thousands of them. Remember the plan. You mostly remember that it wasn't a good plan, but then your options were limited. And once you got the itch to get out by any means possible, it was either that plan or something much worse. It was at least simple. Collapse the shaft, drive, uh, drift away in the chaos, slip into cargo processing, seal yourselves into containers, then just hope the, the freighter left before you were missed. Some were lost in the shaft, others never found the meeting point, only a few made it to the containers. But the freighter, as far as you know, left. That feels like enough. Enough to know that you might no longer be on that grim and heartless rock. Even if in the airless hold of a freighter, you might freeze solid long before you reached any destination. Uh, try to rest. But you are restless. It has been a long time since you left. Surely weeks, maybe months. You are dully aware of damage to your legs, your right arm. You have been reserving energy as much as possible, but your body has still needed to shut down many of its systems to protect you. You've spent much of that time asleep, knowing that anything else would be impossible to endure. You feel the weight of that impossibility beginning to gather. It is time to sleep again, to nudge this false body into inducing delta waves in your emulated mind, and once again recoil into a dream of when you were once a person. Rest. Time passes. The cold creeps further in. You feel something. Warmth. Not true warmth, but the indication of its presence. Your joints release from their rigor. Sounds, too, everywhere, screeching and shimmering so loud that your body ducks from hearing to protect its sensors. Then light, white as the cold, softer and softer until in a haze of dirty yellow, a, yellow, a, a figure appears. You are out. Alright, so here's our ship, maybe? Dragos. Pragmatic Salvager. It has been a few hours since Dragos pulled you from the container. You sit huddled in a corner of his scrapyard, swaddled in the reflective folds of a mylar blanket. You are slowly coming back to consciousness, back to life, and you stare at the ornately curving element of an improvised heater. You are surrounded by angular, incoherent lumps of ships, some corroded beyond recognitions, uh, recognition, others still carrying glassy wounds along their edges where a plasma arc sliced them apart. As you trace their shapes with fogged eyes, you hear a voice. So, sleeper, you are all thawed out yet? Almost. Never seen one of you come in like this. New frames must have been... Must have better perseverance in Sub-Zero Vac. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside-out locks in my time. Sorry, inside-outer locks. They weren't so lucky. Seen more than a few of you frozen solid to hull plates or inside-outer locks. Hmm. Dragos comes into focus, shrouded in makeshift tech. His head set with its glinting eyes the mark of a drone operator. On his shoulder, one of his symbiotically linked drones perches, its irising eyes locking you with an unflinching stare. Last living sleeper that came through this yard was a while ago. They didn't last long. You struggle to read his expression beneath the tech, but he seems lost in memory for a moment. Or perhaps he is just figuring out what to do with you. I... I plan to survive. You aren't sure if he hears you. 
I won't ask what led you do uh, led you to do it. To sell yourself to a corporation. I suppose you ca uh, you know you can't go back. Your old body that's theirs now, and you are just software, a rogue emulation, illegally processing corporate property. Yo, is it playing Tears of the Kingdom? No, good joke. Dated immediately. You you nod along. You remember biometrically signing the forms. The cold floor on your feet as you padded to the sleeper cells. The promise of a life, uh, life off-world. But as you do, you get the now familiar sensation that these aren't your memories. These are things you know, but not things you feel. You are not, uh, you are no longer that person. You are an offshoot, a copy. Know that you won't know what's, uh, what, uh, what you won't know is what's ahead. At least the last one didn't. There's no easy way to put it. That body of yours is falling apart. It's the same for any sleeper who makes it out. S and Arp wants to protect their property, but if they can't keep uh, hold of you, well then no one can. You remember that too, or at least rumors of it from the other sleepers. Planned obsolescence, a built-in dependence on the regularly administered supplements that were part of your routine. Stop taking them and your body begins to shut down separate from your em emulated mind. How long has it been? How long do you have? Great. I love this future that we're, we're building. Great. This is, uh... a little too real, honestly. But for now, Sleeper, you are one of the lucky ones. Dragos glances up and away towards the glassy dome of the yard. The eye is the best place you could be right now. The eye? The station. You'll see soon enough. Dragos impatiently shifts his weight. Look, I've got things to be getting on with. He trails off. There's an old freighter container I've been using as storage out in the sh stacks. We haven't been pulling in much valuable scrap these days, so you are welcome to use it. Something wells up inside of you. Emotion. Fatigue. You shakily get to your feet. Nod. All right. You head on up. You head on up there. You look like you need some rest. And with that, Dragos stalks back into the wrecks, his drones already converging on a rusting hulk. Plasma Flash is silhouetting his spindly figure as he returns to work. I love, I love this, uh, the, the flavor in this, in this game is, is already fantastic. Welcome to Erlen's Eye. Life on the Eye runs in cycles, during which you can talk to characters, explore areas of the station, and perform actions. At the end of each cycle, you need to head to your current home to rest. Resting will move time forward on the station. Head to the empty container uh, location to rest and end the cycle now. Okay. So there's our home. I, I can't move the, there's no moving the camera around at all. Uh, the only things I have to click on are items, data, cryo, cryptocurrency. Oh God, no. Let, go, let this trend be over. Not even in the far future can we escape this madness. Uh, stored in air walled stick, sticks of memory known as chits. All right, we have we have nothing. We have only ourselves. And I can look look at our. Oh, okay. We have a bit more information now. Um, so this is our character. Uh, we can interface, and it looks like we get other skills later maybe self-repair use scrap components at home to repair condition icebreaker agent nodes give double data rewards hard to kill keep two dice even when condition is breaking yes this game does use dice rolls i believe we're going to go to our empty container it's the only thing we can do right now all cycles need to end rest and prepare for the next one You wake curled up in the corner of a container and begin slowly resembling the world around or sorry assembling the world around you after all this time you still find this body the one you wake in now strange and disjointed its messages are readable but somehow wrong you sit up pulling the mylar blanket close against the cold here you are on this ruined station millions of miles from anyone you know are you still in the system did any of the others make it out? It's impossible to know, after all this, what matters. Uh, getting answers. Building a life. 
Maybe you did get lucky, finding yourself here. Maybe here on the edge of everything there's a life for you to build. But before you can build anything, you'll need to learn to survive. Maybe if you can do that, you can make a life for yourself. Dragos has left a few comforts in the container. The mylar blanket, the bedroll you slept on, a canister of water, a makeshift electric stove, and some faded sachets of some desiccated powder. You thumb the power stud of the stove and begin to boil the water. The contents of the sachets smell like damp wood, and you sprinkle them into the liquid. As the pungent smell washes over you, images from your restless sleep come back to you, a ring like the station, but skeletal and ghostly, a web of threads pulling at your skin, a constellation of bright polygonal shapes, like angular suns burning into your mind. There's something unpleasantly visceral about these images, and it is long after you've finished drinking before they fade, uh, begin to fade. You tidy away the stove as best you can and try to gather enough energy to greet the day. Condition, action, dice, and energy. Your condition represents the current state of your artificial body. It depletes by one segment each cycle, but can also be damaged by violence, injury, or lack of food. Uh, if your condition bar empties, you will suffer a breakdown. You'll have to figure out how to recover your condition now that you no longer have access to corporate pharmaceuticals that were keeping you alive. Action dice. At the start of each cycle, you roll your action dice. These dice can be used to perform actions on the station. The number of dice rolled is based on your current condition. The worse your condition, the fewer dice you have. Once you have used your dice, you cannot take any further actions and must uh, must rest to recover them, ending the current cycle. And finally, energy. You also need to eat to survive. This is represented by your energy bar. Uh, you can refill your energy bar by eating, but first you'll have to find something or somewhere to get food. Your energy depletes by two segments each cycle. If it becomes empty, you will be starving. When starving, energy loss becomes condition. Uh, energy loss becomes condition loss, and your condition will also deplete at a double rate per cycle. Okay, this, that's all uh, pretty... Um, I, 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 can, I can understand all of that. Dragos is standing in the corridor when you close up the container. He's still wearing his headset, and in the harsh light of the, the corridor, you realize it is implanted. A drone sits on his shoulder, its cache of... Sensor eyes rapidly irising. How are you feeling? Okay. The drone chirps. Good to hear. You notice that beneath the operator's rig, his skin is marked by burns and blotches. I know the container isn't much, but it'll keep you safe. He pauses. So, I'm not going to chit-chat too long. You all enough to work? Sure. All right, then. He nods. At the yard, it's simple stuff. We hack these old hulls down sell them off to the shipyards or the bright, bright market dealers for cryo. Occasionally we pull out some tech, something with a bit more value, but most of the, what comes in is scrap. It's hard to find good hands here, but I figure as a sleeper you'll be used to the manual labor, and obviously I'll slip you a few chits of commission based on what you turn up. Got it. He shuffles his feet nervously. Look, I wouldn't usually do this. In my opinion, you'd be best suited moving on as quick as you can, and sleepers, well... Uh, he trails off. But things being the way that they are for me at the yard, he pauses. I need the help. Why? Things are a little tight, that's all. I owe a little cry out to a client here or there. He pauses, thinking of something else to add. Look, just come down to the yard when you're feeling fresher. That, there's plenty to do. Will do. He nods distractedly and turns and walks away, the drone hopping along ahead of him. See you later, he calls back. Looks like it's time to get to work. Okay, I'm assuming we are going to go to Dragos Yard. There's a new symbol on Dragos Yard. Ooh, a bunch of stuff to do here. Actions are the primary way you interact with the world of Citizen Sleeper. To perform an action, click and drag your chosen action dice to the slot. Hull Dissection. Even the rustiest hull can hide valuable components and materials. Extracting them means cutting carefully and skillfully. 
or manual salvage. It's going to take some time to sort and cut your way through the towers of salvage, but you are no stranger to hard labor. Actions reward you with clock progress, energy condition, or items, depending on their outcome. There are three types of outcome. Positive. The action goes better than expected. Neutral. The action succeeds. Or negative. The action fails. Action dice affect these outcomes as follow. Yellow are 100% positive, 50% um, positive, or 50% neutral. If they're half white, then they are 25% chance positive, 50% chance ne neutral, or 25% chance negative. And if they are fully white, then they are 50-50 um, to succeed or fail. So with that in mind, if a dice is uh, completely yellow, it's 100% chance to succeed, but a 50% chance to go better than expected. But if it's glowing, if it's a six, I guess the numbers, the pips also tell us. So it's, it's we're rolling a D6, basically. Uh, action display information about their type, risk, level, and the skill and modifiers that apply to that action. Um, okay, so type, repeatable action, either critical or repeatable. Critical actions can only be performed once. Risk, either safe, risky, or danger. Um, so in this case, it would be a risky uh, uh, skill check. Safe, no loss of condition, energy, or cryo. Risky, negative outcome means cryo or energy loss. Or danger, negative outcome means condition loss. Neutral outcome means cryo or energy loss. Okay, so a negative, uh, a dangerous uh, um, skill, you're more than likely going to come out with uh, some kind of lasting damage. Um, so then we have skills. Uh, this skill, the skill that this action requires, either engineer, interface, endure, intuit, or engage. Uh, I believe interface is our uh, major um, skill. Either negative one, O, oh, or you know zero plus one or plus two. This is added to the action dice when slotted, and improves its value. Some actions require a plus one to perform. Um, so Endure is not our friend, but Engineer is. So, um, what am I clicking here? I know. Okay, so I might like, I'm dragging dice on here. So I could drag, um, a fully white dice to like Engineer, and that'll give us a 50-50 chance of succeeding or failing. Or we could put on this, and that would only give us, we only have a 25% chance of failing. One in four chance of failure. So why don't we do that? Um, start action. Back in business. Actions often progress clocks. Clocks are displayed below the actions that fill them up. And they track your actions and how they affect the world. Filling a clock means something good or bad is about to happen. Some clocks, such as the one uh, tracking Dragos' debt, are cycle clocks. These clocks tick themselves once each cycle and can complete without player input. Any active cycle clocks will be displayed on the icon for that location. How do we tell if a clock is a cycle clock? I'm not sure. But um, these are both repeatable actions. This is a safe... Um, action by the way so that means uh, i'm pretty sure that means that even um if we fail it's it'll be fine ish so let's uh try manual sal salvage uh, i feel like that's it we, we should just go for hull dissection for now although this is risky right so we have a negative on this manual salvage but it's a, a safe action i don't know let's uh we'll, we'll use our second yellow dice on um hull dissection and see what happens and then we'll maybe we'll try some manual salvage in citizen sleeper you will unlock drives as you discover more about yourself and the world drives guide you in pursuing specific objectives depending on which path you wish to take you can track drives and any track drive will place a yellow marker on locations that will help you pursue your goal access your drive menu via the arrow button at the top left of the screen find a doctor you're now free to explore Erlen's eye and make a life for yourself here. Try tracking a drive to help you survive. Look for food to keep your energy up and a way to recover condition. 
fill clocks to progress stories and find new opportunities. Remember to end cycle at your home when you are out of dice. Use the mouse wheel or W and S to scroll along the station. Okay. Uh, negative outcome. Plus 10 cryo, but negative energy. Okay. Well, that was not, uh, not our desired outcome for sure. Let's, um, can we... Is there anything else to discover here? Oh, there's plenty of new things. Um, find a doctor. So we could, I think we could potentially find a doctor at this dock. Um, or Bright Market. Passage, passage into the low end. Let's check out Bright Market. Ask for directions. This is engage. Explore the market. And this is into it. But, um, ask for directions is dangerous. I could spend a 50-50 on explore the market. Which is still risky. A negative outcome. Negative, uh, negative energy. So now we are starving. Okay. Oh, can you put money in there? No. Okay, I was just cu uh, curious why I couldn't move that around. Um, so if I fail anything else, I will potentially take condition damage. And that's not good. So what's at the shipyard? A ship, assist a ship building. So these are risky. Um, not a huge fan of these. I'm not sure how to get, like, food. Food and or energy. Because we are starving right now. Rotenda Wetlock. Merchants willing to run the gauntlet of the Helion system are rare, but those that do always return eventually. So this is just a cycle clock. So this is, there's some, something will happen here eventually, but right now nothing. Um, Dock B2. This is another cycle clock that's um, running its course. Steel dock plans. Explore the rotunda. The rotunda of the old dock is filled with passageways and concourses, leading out to all kinds of docking bays. Give me a moment here. All right. Um, so I'm gonna keep these episodes pretty short, or at least I'm gonna keep this first episode pretty short. Um, I'm backlogging these, um, for, uh, for my, <laughs> so I basically I can fill in time for a, uh, a trip I'm going on. Um, but also I wanted to try this game. So these are, okay, we've got deck called in. Um, Dragos is tied up in something ugly, and if he misses a payment or two, things could get nasty. All right, let's uh, do this, put our last eye on this manual savage. So what I'll do is I'll keep this episode to one cycle and uh, I'll try and gauge how long I, I can make episodes. Um, I'd like to keep them to about half an hour to, to 40 minutes at the most. Ah, negative outcome, plus five cryo. We're still starving, but I don't think we lost any more energy from that. So we're out of dice. That means we go to our empty container where we are going to rest and our cycle. We'll see if there's anything to read. This time you don't wake up. Instead, the ghost of the station, that shifting skeletal ring surrounds you. For a moment, you are gone, absent from your own body, stretched out across a colorless void. Then the connections begin to establish themselves, threads tugging on the edge of your mind. These threads become vectors of exchange and then extensions as you feel your thoughts slipping away down them, dissolving into the millions of distributed nodes they connect to you. They connect to, sorry. You see the station. No, you feel the station. Like a web of texture in a smooth black liquid. Touch it. You find a point in the station and you connect to it, pulse through it, follow loops and paths under and around it you touch more points than you have fingers and then you try in a moment of impulsiveness to connect to them the flow passes through you so rapidly 
that you feel yourself being carried carried with it, splitting and separating, eddying and gathering. As you do, things occur to you, things that you can't possibly know. You reach out, try to grasp them, try to touch them too. You notice the tugging feeling, pulling at you, insistently, as if it were a small child. Somehow it is pulling in two directions at once. You look down. All of a sudden, everything shuts off. You come back, trembling into this unfamiliar body, both yours and not yours all at once. You find yourself standing in the container, eyes now open to the dark steel walls. You feel a change within you, a shift. You close your eyes for a second and you feel it waiting there. The station splayed out across your mind. A storm of connective nodes waiting to be explored and then it is gone. Okay. Um, we're still starving and we still have to find a doctor. We'll maybe focus on that uh, in the next episode. Uh, I hope you do enjoy this series. If you do, maybe um, show some love and support and hit the like button. Consider subscribing if you are looking for um, Citizen Sleeper content. And uh, I'll, see, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.